All right. Hello, hello everybody. This is um, Kubernetes SIG architecture meeting for November 3rd, 2022. Um, and uh, why don't we get started? Uh, I think we have, uh, I guess, uh, I, the uh, Rian, you or Steven want to take over? I think the only thing on the agenda right now is conformance update from the conformance sub project, which. Yes, it, it is us. We have hijacked this meeting, it seems. Um, who, who should I give presentation kind. privileges to? Um, give it to me. It's fine. I've got the agenda open here. Then I'll roll okay. with, let me move that over here. Move that through my middle screen. All right. You're all set. And share, share a screen. And I want to share that one there. There we go. You can see my screen. That's beautiful. Good. It is beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> Wonderful. We we just about closed the the, the 126 release now. Um, we don't think we're going to get anything in else in because it's only the nastiest, stickiest things that's left. Um, great job there from Stephen with the last test that came in. We have got 97.5 percent um, tested. If we look at the pie chart, it's only those three small gaps that still need to be filled. Um, only 10 endpoints. The little gray spot at the top of the the pyramid or, or the, wow. the stack graph. Look at where we started. Yeah. We we look at where we started, and we did we did we did uh, talk about this in the in the talk because this has been an amazing amazing journey um, to get here. Yeah, no, it was sweat, blood, sweat, and tears, but it's nice. We we really hope Stephen and I are. We, we tried to do it before Detroit, which was too hard because of the, the quality of endpoints left. Uh, but we really, the, the idea is we should be done by by Amsterdam and both Stephen and myself hope to be there to awesome. celebrate it. Um, looking at the endpoints remaining, we basically, what we did, did with these, we broke them into categories. So it looks like there's gonna be five distinct tests. Um, so Stephen is at the moment researching quite hard on the, the pod one, so pod binding, pod forward, and pod attach. I'm um, doing a bit of a Roman writing on, on across the three. Um, then we still have um, authorization, which is fairly, we haven't done much of those, so it's going to, going to take quite a bit of research to do that. So we hope to have tests or E2E tests ready for review before end of the year. Um, so we can have an early early wins again next year early um, in January. Then we have the sticky ones that's uh, left behind is the API service endpoints. We already, I think we've had, yeah, you know, we had a test ready, a E2E test ready, um, but it required RBAC if I remember correctly. Steven, you got to correct me here if I'm wrong. Then we changed it around uh, not to use RBAC uh, on advice from Jordan. We had mm -hmm. a working E2E test, um, was doing well on all the pre-checks, got it in, and then it went terribly flaky and breaking things um, for all four endpoints where it got, got reverted. One okay. of the problems is there is a bug specifically on um, replace API registration it's, uh, server status endpoint. Um, there's an issue for that. So we we will bring that around when we have more attendees um, to discuss this. It might be that we have to put that one on until that's fixed, put that on as ineligible because it breaks things, especially on a HA cluster. Okay. Um, and then the other thing, what I'm considering is early next year, go to API machinery and ask if there's anybody there that will come alongside us and have a look at these because this will be the last last to one percent because at the moment uh, every endpoint is worth 20.25 percent so these <laughs> these will be the last one percent and we will ask them nicely to please come along we, we've had some real good slugs at this with no success yet so yeah yeah and i think I mean, and i can um i can see who i can pull in from that uh from google at least like um mm. or we can talk to david from red hat like so um, I, no, it would be really great if somebody come with proper experience on these API endpoints come along and just say, don't do this, just flip it the other way around because right. we've been, we've tried several things. I mean, okay. Okay. terrible for API machinery if they are the one percent between us and the end. <laughs> we will shame. Or maybe I should market it like that. No, we make a shame, <laughs> a shame point. 
<laughs> which is not the idea. Um, okay, so that is for me for reporting where we are. So John, if you do have somebody in mind, I really appreciate if we can get some help on this. I, I know everybody's crazy, but it's this time of year, uh, maybe a kick off January know, thing. I don't know who great. the right person would be, but I can, I, you know, I can, I know who would know who the right person is. <laughs> so I will, I will track that down for you. Specifically okay. the API registration pieces you're talking about. Yes. Uh, for authorization so you... pieces, Jordan is probably, you know, a great person to talk to if he's not mm -hmm. busy. Um, but for the API registration, I can check uh, who would be good for that. Unfortunately, we found the best people is the busiest with that's course, why they're yeah. the best. <laughs> okay, so um, I will, if, if you don't get some, I'll, if, I will be your conscience and ping you in, in Slack in a week or two if and just check if check in if you don't mind. If okay, you, yeah, if you yeah. identify and I see somebody. Claire just joined. He might be able to help you with the authorization ones too if you need help with those. All right, that would be great. Um, see, I'm volunteering you, Tim. You, you, you made the mistake of showing up. I'll have to catch up on the context. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All performance right. tests, we have less than, what is it, less than 2%, less than 3% left untested. And these are the ones left. I don't know if these ones need, if, if the team needs help or with, with these, but if you're familiar with these, it might be helpful um, to get, um, jump in and help out with conformance. Uh, really just consult with the team on, on mm. conformance. Yeah, what, what, what I just explained is specifically on API service, we already had two attempts at it, which one broke things badly, so we had to revert it. So uh, yeah, we I don't appreciate know that be, and, authorize, authorize and authorization. Ones. Yeah, authorization ones. I mean, at least he used to be in SIG off, but that was, that was a long time ago. So. Yeah. so yeah, tell me if you have thoughts on this. We will appreciate some, some feedback, or if we can just pin you directly with questions, it would also be great. Yeah, you're welcome to ping me directly. Um, I'll try and take a look. Fantastic. Awesome. Uh, All right. Thanks for that, That's John. And then the, ne the next point is, uh, I'm gonna throw it over to Steven. He's done quite a bit of research on pod binding already. So he's got some questions. We wanna take that, Steven. Uh, it, it was more of a follow-up from uh, last meeting and uh, Aaron suggested about, um, instead of to be able to hit the pod binding uh, endpoint about having a uh, pod that uses a custom scheduler that of course follows the standard scheduler process. Um, and I was just wondering whether or not um, that sounds like an okay idea for the test to be able to do that. And I've found uh, an initial how to use a uh, another scheduler of course i'm going to have to use the package scheduler of course for the go code but it's just trying to just going with the general idea of we need the e2e agent to be able to see the actual pacific endpoint being hit and at the moment we do see it but it, of course it's been tagged against the controller which of course we can't um, tag that in the api um snoop I see. So it's like, right. Um, yeah, you don't actually need to schedule anything. You just need to hit the end API endpoint and make it sure it works. Yeah, I, I, that sounds like a reasonable thing to me. My only question would be, can you configure a scheduler, which it looks like you can, without mucking with command line flags, right? If you can do it through the API, um, then that seems like a good approach. Um, I just don't know if our test infrastructure allows you to muck around with anything more. Um, uh, yeah. If you scroll back to the top of the a document, Ryan, there is the reference there uh, about using the implementation from the package scheduler. So what I'm expecting to do is to be able to go and look at that set of packages and pulling that actually directly into the test as part of the test and I think that. yeah it's that's probably fine but I don't know that you need to do something that heavy like you really need a, a fake scheduler right just that that you hit the endpoint and it, and it does what you expect it to do um like you don't need 
um, any sophisticated, you know, real scheduling. So I would consider just writing a fake scheduler class that makes use of the endpoint and can validate that the endpoint does what you expect without necessarily having to bring in. Um, I, I've never looked at this code, so I have no idea what it does. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 my, my current perception is that would be the general process for like an integration test. But I thought that most of the E2E tests are actually having to use real processes and stuff as part of the actual test requirements, I thought, for E2E's. Mm -hmm. Maybe, yeah, that may be. Um, I just, uh, if you think about what you're end-to-end -end testing, you're end-to-end -end testing kind of the ability to inject a custom scheduler. You're not testing the functioning of that scheduler. So in that sense, the end-to-end -end test in my mind is that your scheduler gets invoked or whatever in the way it's supposed to, and that it underlying APIs that it relies on do what they're supposed to. But I don't know enough details about this area of the code to provide a definitive answer on that. Uh, that that this, um, shrinks the scope of the problem quite a bit. So I'll look at that as a okay. initial part and then someone else can sort of say, hey, from scheduling, um, sorry, that's not going to be good enough. Sure. We're going to have to yeah. rejig it a different way. So thanks for the tip. Yeah, sure. Thanks, John. Um, then if you do it that way, Stephen and I discussed about RBAC. Would RBAC be required for that or can we do it without because that opens another in general, our, we don't want for, for any conform. I mean, our back is not a, a required, you don't need to even run our back, right? So, so we should be able to do this stuff without our back for sure. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah. Because if it needs our back, it's out, then we can't test it. Right. Yeah. As far as I know, there's no reason why we, you can constrain things with our back, but if our back is off, uh, as I recall, we usually do these conformance tests such that we attempt uh, or we, we check for our back or something and, mm. uh, or something like that. I, I don't know. There's a few places where we do that, as I recall. Um, and we, um, like if, if somebody's running the conformance tests against a cluster that has our back enabled, then the conformance test should still work and be subject to that our back. The RBAC has to be set up properly for that conformance test to work. Mm -hmm. If somebody's running a conformance test against a cluster that does not have RBAC enabled, it should still work. That's that's what we mean when we say RBAC's not part of conformance. It's that mm -hmm. we should be indifferent to whether it's set up. But if it is set up, it has to be set up properly. If we can't set it up properly, like the context of where how our end-to-end -end tests run uh, aren't going to have that level of permission, then we, we should discuss that. Like I think we we made some ineligible like around like node registration or something like mm. that because of this kind of issue. Yeah, yeah. Nice, oh, thank you, John. That's really helpful. Yep. yep. Okay. Um, uh, that, I think that's our that, whole agenda today, right? That brings it to the end of my spill. Thanks for entertaining <laughs> me for taking over oh, the meeting. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> there's no other agenda, so. I'm um, glad we were able to help. And uh, I guess unless there's any other burning issues somebody wants to raise, um, although we have a very small attendance today, so I would probably just defer them anyway. Um, please uh, 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 let me know going once, twice, three times, we're done. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, we'll reach out. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.